Ever since I can remember, and I'm old mind you, Virarc and Hull Cartridge have been working together bringing the UK shooters the finest PCP and spring powered air rifles. And they've teamed up again. And this time it's to bring you the brand new Virarc HW110. And while you're getting a look at the brand new HW110, I need to point something out. This is not a replacement for the HW100. So let me just repeat that. In no way is this a redesign, restructure, remodel, update of the Varark HW100. This is a brand new rifle and the components making that rifle are all brand new as well. And talking of those components, let's take a closer look. One of the main talking points on the Varark 110 is what the main block is made out of and it's a ballistic polymer and the best thing to compare that to is a Glock. Glock is a very well-known make of pistol in the world today and they use ballistic polymers, actually it's called Polymer 2, as part of their main skeleton frame of their pistols. And for the first time ever, that technology and knowledge has been transposed into the air gun market. And the Varag HW110 uses a ballistic polymer to form the main block of the gun. I've fired Glock pistols in the United States. This one's the full auto version. And I strongly believe that if the ballistic polymers in these pistols can handle the recoil and the pressure waves from a 9mm cartridge, it's surely going to be able to handle the pressure of an air rifle. Good shooter right there. Thank you. Gaston Glock invented the formula Polymer 2, and that's what transposed into his firearms. Polymer 2 is a nylon based formula and it's incredibly tough. It's actually rated harder than carbon steel. Now I'm not saying that that is Polymer 2. Varark won't actually tell me what it is. But what I can say is that these new carbon ballistic composites are incredibly tough and I think we're going to see them a bit more in the future. But as for now, let me show you how I got on with the new Varark. Hull Cartridge initially agreed to lend me one of these rifles for 30 days. It says so on the paperwork. However, I could be in a little bit of trouble because I've had it now for three months. But still, at least you know it's been tested. My HW110 weighs, unscoped, three kilograms. Actually, if you want to pick hairs, it's 3.004 kilograms. The rifle length is 98 centimetres. Length of the barrel with the silencer on is 51 centimetres and without it, it's 34 centimetres. The stock can be easily removed. You simply undo these two Allen screws underneath the fore end. And then you can see that single casting block, which is all very clean and neat. The barrel strapping is attached to the block by a metal plate, which increases the rigidity of the barrel alignment. The stock itself is a soft touch coating on a wooden moulding, which, if I pick an unseen area, is very difficult to scratch. And the stock itself, in weight, is 1.1 kilograms. In an earlier video, I did say that the cocking lever could be changed by the user at home from right-handed to left-handed. That is incorrect, I apologise. It is a factory special order should you wish to have the cocking lever on the left hand side. Moulded into the 110's block on the top is a Picatinny rail, which is 12 centimetres in length. I said earlier in the video that these ballistic mouldings really are quite tough. No, really, they are quite tough. I'm gonna let you into a secret. This is about the 20th take that I've been doing on this bit, trying to get my words right. And I keep shaking it, and nothing rattles or rolls, and nothing breaks. Really, it's quite impressive. Something nice to note is the marking on the cylinder saying whole cartridge. Mine is a UK retail version in full, not an import. And that's very important, because you know that what you're seeing is a fully backed whole cartridge rifle. The trigger is factory set, 
Now I can see the places to adjust it, and I'm sure some of you will try. However, my manual says not to. Thus, I've not fettled with the trigger in any way, but it's actually just fine. The block has the safety on both sides, but the magazine release on the right hand side. I'm guessing that this silver stud on the left hand side is where the magazine release would be if you have a left hand loading rifle. The cocking lever is fully manual, and by that I mean it's not sprung loaded in any way. The whole of the movement is down to you, but it is very sweet and smooth. And in seven tins of pellets, the magazine indexing has not missed the beat. That's German build quality for you. From a 200 bar fill, and that's easy to spot on the clear gauge on the front of the cylinder, I've been getting an average of around 120 shots. I can shoot a little into the yellow out of the green on mine. On the VARARC website, it says the 110 is regulated. I've shot and chronoed the gun. It appears to be regulated. I know people in the egg and industry that have bought one of these just to take it apart. And they say it's regulated in VARARC's own very clever kind of way. But I've had some people come up to me and say, no, 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 no. You can't say regulated. It's a self-regulating valve. Do you know what? I'm not a gunsmith. What I care about is, is it accurate and consistent? And it's a big yes on both of those. But if you are a highly qualified yet unemployed gunsmith, you can tell me all about it in the comments section below. The 10 shot magazine is a very simple one piece metal disc with a rubber O-ring on the outside to help seat the pellets. And you can load it very easily one handed. Loading the 110 is very simple. Pull the cocking lever all the way back and then lift this lever here. Now I'm doing this in a strange way because it's for the camera. But you push the magazine all the way in, rotate it once to make sure you're happy it's seated and then let that lever go. And you push the bolt forward. Now you can then put the gun into safe. This safety only operates when the gun is cocked. I can hear you screaming, how accurate is it? Well, I'm gonna show you, but because everyone loves scope cam footage, I'm gonna change the scope, and I'm gonna put on an ATN X-Site 2 HD. Ta-da, here we go. The ATN X-Site 2 has Picatinny mounts built in so I won't need to use the sports match ones. We don't need the illuminator, because it's not night time. And because it is very bright, I've got to put the shade on the front. Ta-da! Quick zero, and I can show you some accuracy. The grippy feel from that soft touch coating on the 110 stock is exaggerated by the moulded stippling on the forend and grip. Now we Brits love to complain about the weather and I got to admit I'm filming this bit outdoors on one of the hottest days of the year but the view down the valley is absolutely gorgeous. 
part of accuracy testing is to try different pellets. Therefore, for today's demonstration, I've picked four different tins. I've got a tin of Daystate Sovereigns, <coughs> JSBs. I've got a tin of Bisley Superfields, a tin of Remington Thunder Sports, and a tin of JSB Exact Diablos. Let's see how I get on. In here are my results at 30 yards. I've placed half inch coins over the main groupings on all the targets. And for me, the winner, just by a whisker, is the JSB Exact Diablos. And I'm gonna use those, and I'm gonna refattle my scope and have another go at 30 yards. <laughs> Accuracy test wouldn't be accuracy test without going out to 50 yards. So I'm going to pick the target up and walk back 20 more yards using my trusty tape measure. I get asked a lot to show the footage of what I'm doing when I'm trying to set up for a long range shot. Well here it is. I've gone from 30 yards to 50 yards and I need to zero the rifle. It's very easy to do with the ATN X-Site 2. I've already fired one shot into the shoot and see below, so I've got an idea of where the pellet is going. Now that shot has just gone high. I've heard it clip the top of the pellet holder. So I'm gonna have another look see and see where the pellet is going. And I can tell straight away that I'm one marker above on my crosshair. So I readjust 
and I start shooting. And here are my results at 30 yards and 50 yards. At 30 yards, I've got seven through the same hole. I'm really happy with that. And at 50 yards, I've got six within a half inch group. My work here on accuracy is done. The VAR 110 is as sweet as it is good looking. The rifle with the included onboard silencer is garden quiet which means targets all day. And filling from a cylinder is the easiest way to top up. If you get too good on the garden, maybe give the HW110 an outing to a club. It's going to fit right in. And with the heritage that is Varark, I'm sure you're gonna meet a lot of like-minded Varark fans. The power across those 120 shots I've been getting is consistent with the average being at 764.1 feet per second. That's with an 8.4 grain pellet. That's 10.89 foot pounds. Oh, that's nice, I like that. That's great. Varark has kept us waiting for a long time for something new. And this was, without doubt, a curveball, which has turned into a home run for the shooter. New technology, new materials, and a new shooting experience make this a great little package, which is going to be a big hit. And the Brits got it first.